welcome. It's indisputable. I'm your host, Rashad Richie. Good to be with you. We have a lot on the agenda today. Breaking down news of the day. None other than A. B. Burns Tucker Law School graduate. Law school graduate. Congratulations to her and host of I Am Legally Hype. Always a fascinating breakdown. Top story of the day. Fulton County Sheriff Patrick Labot said. If Trump is indicted, which by the way, we know he will be indicted by the Fulton County Grand Jury. He's going to receive zero special treatment, which means mug shots and also fingerprints. Something we have not seen previous. Let's put him up full mass. Naturally, this conversation is centered around the reality of Donald Trump as predicted being indicted again by the Department of Justice. I do predict that Trump will be indicted likely this week or next week by the Fulton County Grand Jury officially. That's the sheriff who's in charge of Fulton County, Patrick Labatt. He said on Tuesday that if former President Donald Trump were to be indicted in connection with efforts to overturn the 2020 election in the state, He would not receive special treatment and would be booked and photographed just like any other defendant. The Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie T. Willis has signaled that she will bring indictment to the matter by the middle of the month. Unless someone tells me differently, Labatt said on Tuesday, his office would follow normal practices. And so it doesn't matter your status. We'll have mug shots ready for you. Let me say that last statement again. He said, we'll have mug shots ready for you, end quote. Who's going to arrest Donald Trump, fingerprint him and do the mug shot? A man named Labatt. Now, given the security dynamic, He may, Patrick Labatt, the sheriff, may have an issue with Secret Service. We know that Manhattan DA had basically a negotiation with Secret Service, all in the name of security. There's more. Sheriff Labatt's remarks raised the prospect that a former president could be booked at the county jail near downtown Atlanta. But it seems, but it remains to be seen whether the Secret Service would weigh in and alter the sheriff's plans. Should an indictment of Mr. Trump come to pass? Now, let me say this. How can the Secret Service alter a constitutionally mandated process? Remember, an elected sheriff in the state of Georgia is a constitutional authority. That constitutional authority serves by way of the state constitution. To override a constitutional authority, it requires the highest court in the state to do so. That is not the secret service. So it would be quite interesting to see what kind of argument they would make that could override the elected sheriff of the local county in which a person is indicted. I thought people were not above the law. Let's put up the woman prosecuting this case, Fonnie Willis, the elected DA. The elected DA has been receiving significant threat to her personal safety, as you can imagine. She travels in the city and beyond with an entourage out of necessity for her safety. This is not a game. The message called Willis a corrupt racial ex, uh, expletive and threatened, you are going to fail, you a Jim Crow Democrat blank. Willis explained to the group that the message went to, I am sending to you, uh, talking about her colleagues in justice, I am sending to you in case you are unclear on what I and my staff have come accustomed to over the last two and a half years. I guess I'm sending this as a reminder that you should stay alert 
over the month of August and stay safe. She ended the note, quote, I took an oath. No one other than the citizens of Fulton County put me in this seat. I have every intention of doing my job. Please make decisions that keep your staff safe. Now, is Donald Trump saying to his followers, don't threaten district attorneys? Don't threaten members of her staff who are simply doing their job. Do not act violently on my behalf. This is not democracy. Is he saying anything like this? Of course not. So since Donald Trump will not provide basic courtesy, why should the sheriff provide extended courtesy? Here's what Trump said to his new indictment from the Department of Justice. Let's put it up. So Trump went on another rant. Basically, the first part says blah, blah, blah. But let me read to you the third paragraph. I think it's quite interesting. He says, the answer is election interference. The lawlessness of these persecutions of President Trump and his supporters is reminiscent of Nazi Germany in the 1930s. The former Soviet Union and other authoritarian dictatorial regimes. President Trump has always followed the law and constitution with advice from many highly accomplished attorneys. These un-American witch hunts will fail and President Trump will uh, will be reelected to the White House so he can save our country from the abuse, incompetence and corruption that is running through the veins of our country at levels never seen before. Well, they posted this on Truth Social. It is the campaign of Trump. I am sure Trump is the one typing. Let's put up Mike Pence. Mike Pence, the former vice president of President Donald Trump, the man that Donald Trump tried to get assassinated. What did Mike Pence say? Mike Pence said, today's indictment serves as an important reminder. Anyone who puts himself over the Constitution should never be president of the United States, end quote. Mike, let me say this, man. I hope Trump doesn't become president because he may try to do something to you. Sir, the way you are going about your back and forth with the guy who tried to kill you is insane to me. You out of everyone running, you are the guy who literally knows everything. You know it all. You know so damn much, they're afraid to put you on the stand because that's how much you know. You have no constitutional protections. You're a VP, you're not even listed. You have zero constitutional protections. You don't even get to declassify stuff, sir. So let's be clear, if you wanna run for president, Mike Pence, run for president. There's more, Pence also said our country, our country is more important than one man. Our constitution is more important than one man's career. On January 6th, the former president, Trump demanded that I choose between him and the Constitution. The Constitution and I always will. I chose the Constitution, I always will. Um, No, so you chose Dan Quayle, sir. You chose Dan Quayle, you called Dan, we know man. It's already out there, it's in the streets. You called Dan Quayle and you said, listen Dan, is there any way that I can possibly do this and get away with it? And Dan said, If you do it, you're going to prison, Mike, that's what's going to happen. If you do this, you're going to be arrested. So Mike then decided to be super constitutional, Mike Pence. There you go. Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene, what does she have to say about this? Marjorie Taylor Greene, US Congresswoman out of the state of Georgia. She said, quote, I would still vote for Trump even if he's in jail. This is a communist attack on America's First Amendment to vote for who the people want for president by an attempt to take Trump off the ballots through a politically weaponized DOJ. People know exactly what this is, end quote. Ironic, isn't it? Donald Trump literally won a campaign for president based on the idea 
of weaponizing the DOJ against his political opponents. Lock her up was a weaponization of the Department of Justice against a political opponent. He ran on that, had people chant lock her up and won. You see, his followers are actually okay with weaponizing the Department of Defense against their political enemies. They are okay with electing individuals who will flat out say, we're going to weaponize law enforcement against political enemies. When Trump was president of the United States, the man tried to recruit another foreign head of state in order to investigate political opponents in America. This not only had to happen, should have happened while he was in office. Mike Pence all of a sudden has a backbone. Chris Christie all of a sudden found his backbone. But the reality is these men were well aware of who was in charge of this nation for four years. They backed it because it gave them access to power. Their real true north, ladies and gentlemen, I hate to say this. It is not you, it is not the American people, it is their proximity to power. All right, my dear sister, thoughts here. Oh, I have quite a few, <laughs> okay. So I'll start off with this, first and foremost, um, Mr. Trump is a defendant. And so he should be treated as defendants are treated, which means you get a mugshot, you get fingerprinted, you are booked, right? Um, and the reason why I think that is important is because so many American people right now feel that our justice system is a sham and it doesn't work as it's supposed to work, right? It is one sided and lopsided. We know from experience that the scales of justice are not balance. So I think by making him go through the process as a criminal defendant would, I think that reinstates confidence in what our system of justice is about and the criminal procedures that should be followed when you have a defendant. So that's first and foremost. Um, second, what I would say is that I think we need to do this because his his excuse me, his base does not think this is real, right? Trump supporters think that He's just being attacked and it's a witch hunt and this, that, and the third. And because he has not been held accountable by having a mug shot, by having to do fingerprinting and all of that, it makes it easier for them to accept that fallacy. But the reality is that these are real charges, okay? And these prosecutors are people who their jobs and their careers are on the line and they are here to serve the American people. And with that being said, let's not forget that at least three of the prosecutors right now who have filed charges against Trump or have charges pending are black. Yep. Right? So we also need to validate that and that this has nothing this has everything to do with the fact that Trump has allegedly broken the law and he has violated the rights of the American people, American people's civil rights. And I say that to say that for everyone to love the Constitution so much and be so supportive of the Constitution, you should have a problem with the fact that Trump went against the Constitution in order to try to keep power when he was not elected to power. And that goes to Marjorie Lomarmar, her point of view, right? Saying that this is what the people want, this is what the people voted for. Let's check the facts, baby, because in 2016 when he did win, it wasn't by the people's vote by the popular vote. He won due to the electoral college. So let's keep the facts facts, which is why we need this process to happen. And on that, I was just the last thing I'll say is that as color people, people of color, right? The global majority, we've been telling y'all that law enforcement was law enforcement was eh, for a minute, mm -hmm. but nobody wanted to hear us, right? When we were saying it, it was it was nah, y'all y'all playing, right? Um, y'all just playing victim. Y'all need to get out of the past. With the, but now that you are feeling the justice, now you are feeling what it feels like to be a defendant, to have to explain to your family what is going, what could potentially happen, to face losing your businesses, to face losing money, right? Now it's real. Now you don't like it. All right, daycare worker, daycare worker arrested for abuse, put her up for a mask. Unbelievable story, but it happened. 23 year old Alyssa Eve Dupree, a now former employee of a Louisiana daycare has been arrested for child abuse endangerment. Dupree is facing six counts of cruelty to a juvenile as a former employee at Pumpkin Patch Daycare in Louisiana. Her bond is currently set at 18,000. Let me give you the background. Disturbing footage obtained by local news shows employees duct taping children. 
duct taping them to chairs, scaring them with masks to the point of tears and throwing cheese at their faces in this position. I want you to look at that scene for a minute. We would call that torture if done to an adult. Done to a child, it is more than torture. They are seen laughing, the individuals, the adults are laughing while the children are crying for help. According to Andriana Rasmussen, whose family member was a worker at the facility, the abuse has been ongoing for years. Quote, there was a lot of mistreatment of kids. The workers, the staff would put their hands on people's kids and she worked there years ago. The video obtained by local media is reportedly two and a half years old. However, it will not hinder the pursuit of additional charges. And there's no statute of limitations for this. Um, the local police chief, Kyle Lebeau, confirmed that the investigation is ongoing and additional arrests are likely. Quote, an innocent child should not have to go through that, especially if someone put their child in someone else's care. It's by our understanding, this could possibly be quite old. But that really doesn't matter when it comes to criminal charges. Once again, no statute of limitations has been expired here. Um, state authorities, well, what are they doing? Well, state authorities, interestingly enough, are now taking a new initiative to conduct their own investigation. According to records from the Louisiana Department of Education, the daycare has been subjected to 15 inspections among which nine were found to have deficiencies. While the most recent inspection in October 2022 did not reveal any deficiencies, the inspection the year prior indicated that the daycare was cited for failing to meet the requirements of maintaining indoor and outdoor areas free of hazards. Last July, all staff members were cited for not having CPR certification as required when on the center's premises. And then in 2017, staff reportedly used a high chair to restrain a three-year-old after a playground fight. Owner and manager, let's put them up. Courtney Fontenot has been unavailable for comment. Since last week, the daycare remained closed and disabled all social media. They're trying to disappear. Google reviews also cite an unnamed employee by Racism by multiple accounts, a named employee for racism by multiple accounts. It um, Here's the cause and effect. The reason why I wanted you to know some of the background through the inspection process is because um, they had nine significant violations, nine. You have to put this in the framework of simple common sense. If you don't care about children in one aspect, let's say, you allow hazardous things to remain around them. It is not, it is not a wrong assumption that you don't care about the children in another aspect. And then the violations are at least consistent, semi-consistent if nothing else. But they were allowed to continue to operate. I guarantee you there's another document. It's called what they pay to the state document. You see, many times the agencies that regulate the institution are also being funded by the very organizations that they oversee. That's the way the process normally works. So if you start actually shutting down facilities, you may have a net negative revenue. But when it comes to children, there is no political economic measure. You should simply do what the rules require every time, no exception. All right, just sister thoughts on this.
Yeah, so first and foremost, just as a child care worker, right, uh, provider in general, you are held to a higher standard of care, right? You have a higher duty to take care of these children and protect these children as they are in your care. And that is what parents expect when they drop their kids off. And quite frankly, when they're paying their money for you to watch their children, right? So. This is just unacceptable across the board. However, I do think that there should be some negligence, right? Vicarious liability um, for whomever is running this um, facility, right? Courtney, whoever he is, he needs to be, or they, whoever they are, um, need to be held liable for this as well because you hired the teachers and Mm -hmm. the staff that are um, doing these egregious acts, right? Against these children. And let's be clear, if we we treated pets like this, Mm -hmm. if we had pets, Mm -hmm. right? Dogs, animals um, held up like this, oh, criminal charges would be quick, right? Yeah. There would be petitioner people all over that, making sure that some sort of justice was held. And so I think the same should be done here. Um, and I also think that whoever does the evaluations and let this facility slide, y'all need to be held vicariously liable too, because you clearly didn't do your job and you clearly didn't follow your duty and whatever oath or whatever contract you signed for your job, because this should not be allowed. Right, children, as much as we have our our pro-lifers, y'all should be all over this. Because what we don't want is people abusing children, harming children, right? Putting children in danger. And this is exactly what is happening now. And so it's just completely unacceptable. And I think liability needs to be held from the top down. And the fact that it was so accepted shows the culture of that entire environment. And one former employee said it's actually been happening for years. We will stay on top of it, bring you developments as they come. All right, Costco worker upset because she was told, listen, we don't like the way the clothes fit on your body. You need to wear bigger clothes to work. She did a video, we're gonna get into it, here it is. I just wanna know, do I look inappropriate for work? My dress code is a polo and dress pants or jeans, no rips. I'm dressed appropriately, however, I was called into the office because I don't have the right body shape. (laughs) I cannot help my body shape. I got a verbal because of my body shape and I was told I need to wear bigger clothes. I don't appreciate being body shaped. I'm being body shamed. They don't know what I went through in my life and the trauma that I went through to have to deal with being body shamed at work. All I want to do is work. And I'm not being dramatic, but you pulled me away from doing my job to tell me that I have the wrong type of body to wear the clothes that I'm wearing. I have on regular dress pants. And your excuse was, the men in the tire shop and the boys keep stopping and looking at me. That's not my fault. You don't know the type of hell I had to go through my whole life just for how I look. You don't know what type of mental trauma I might have from having to be misunderstood. For me to come to work to have to hear, oh, you have the wrong body shape. To wear the right clothes though, because I'm in dress code. It's really sad. That instead of putting the emphasis on the inappropriate behavior, the unprofessional behavior of the other colleagues who, I guess, could not control themselves. Instead of putting the emphasis on that, according to her, they brought her into the office, told her to change, told her to wear different clothes. Put up the picture. Look fine to me. Aisha Mason. New Jersey woman is claiming she received a reprimand from Costco. The managers did this due to an alleged violation of the company's dress code. She strongly maintains she was in compliance with the guidelines. The incident has left her feeling embarrassed. And Mason now accuses her managers of body shaming. Mason vented her frustration on social media on July 26, saying, and I quote, I was called into the office and told that although I have on the right attire, I have the wrong body shape to wear it. I am in dress code, but because the men keep looking at me, I have to come to work in bigger clothes. That's hashtag body shame, hashtag harassment, and it's just plain wrong. 
Costco needs to focus on much more important things than my body shape. I am embarrassed. This is embarrassing. And I'm sure it was. Should not have had to go through that. Um, in, a, in a video, she said she was borderline pissed. And she has people following her around the store, but she can't help that. All right. According to Zipia, the uh, Costco dress code specifies that women should wear an appropriate blouse or shirt during their work hours, along with either pants or a skirt. The preferred choices for bottoms are dress pants and khakis, but there is also the option for women to wear knee length skirts if they prefer. Additionally, female employees are required um, to don the Costco vest and wear the name tag provided by the company. Uh, let's put up a picture. Once again, it looks fine to me. Mason's case mildly mirrors that of an uh, Ariana Cassie, a former Home Depot employee. Cassie faced a similar situation where her online pictures and uniform went viral, making it unbearable due to harassment, stalking, cyberbullying to stay on the job. It's a damn shame. Both received backlash implying that they had a desire for attention while working at their respective stores. However, unlike Mason, Costa's attire was not deemed too tight, nor did she receive reprimands from superiors about her clothes. On July 31st, five days after the incident, Mason returned to Instagram with a note for her followers. Thank you to everyone who supports me. I understand what I was saying in my video. To ones that didn't agree with me, but gave me great advice, I appreciate you too. I understand you said it out of love and good intentions. To the ones who felt the need to harshly criticize me and jump on the bandwagon to disrespect me and try to create a false narrative of my situation, I understand that's a you problem. It's deeper than me. I pray for your spirit. Um, so well said, dear sister. Costco has not released a statement, not an official statement, not sure if they have spoken to her directly or not. But I will say this, you need to release a statement. You need to release a public statement. You need to stand by the employee who is not breaking the rules because I'm sure there's a rule against what the other employees are alleged to have done to her. I'm sure there's a rule against that. How about if you want to be, you know, the enforcer of rules, enforce the rule of professionalism, decorum, respect your peers? Where are your leaders at at that Costco? What kind of feckless manager? Calls in the woman who is being either heckled at or inappropriately approached. And instead of handling the individuals who are breaking the policy, you decide to try to leverage your authority over the woman who's actually a victim. It's a damn shame. All right, AB thoughts. You know, this is an issue that we've had for I don't know how long, right? With people thinking that it's okay to body shame black women. We can take it back to Sarah Bartman. Mm -hmm. If you don't know Bartman, right? If you don't know who that is, look up uh, Venus Hot and Tot and you'll get a good history on that. So it just brings me back to that, right? So that's the first thing I'm gonna say. Second thing I'm gonna say is what part of this is not sexual harassment? Right, when you first go into a job, most times in a corporate setting, you are required to do a, a harassment training, sexual harassment training. And things like this are noted on there, right? That you do not make people feel uncomfortable because of their looks, right? And the person who is being victimized should not be in trouble because there are people who cannot control themselves as human beings. That is what the rules and regulations are there for. Not for you to demonize the victim. But to protect them so that they don't have these issues and feel this way. So I hope a attorney in New Jersey has fun with this because she deserves justice on this matter. I also want to say, see, this is why we have things like the Crown Act, because <laughs> y'all yeah. don't believe us, right? When we say that we are discriminated against based on our looks, right? Based on how we, things we cannot help, right? How our hair grows, how our body is shaped. That is not something that most of us have any control over. Right, so it's not okay that someone is trying to earn an honest living, because I heard nothing about her work ethic, right? I heard nothing about her professionalism. I heard she got reprimanded because she is a beautiful, bodacious black woman. Yeah. Don't be mad, right? 
Don't be mad at that because she came to do her job. And that is what it sounds like she has been doing. And so I think she should be respected for that. And whoever looks at her inappropriately, they should be reprimanded. I will also say is this is why we need diversity and equity training from the top down. So that you understand that these type of issues are very common. But they are due to the ignorance of people not being included, not having diverse um, environments, not growing around, growing up in diverse environments where they can understand something like this. So I think it's ridiculous. I do think that Costco needs to go ahead and put out a statement. I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed, right, as a Costco member. I'm, I'm ashamed and I'm in disbelief that Costco would allow one of their employees, and their employees normally stay for a long time. Yeah. Allow one of their employees to be disrespected, harassed, and reprimanded for doing her job because somebody else can do stay focused on their own work and do their job. That's what needs to be reprimanded and written up. I'm gonna gotta say this. Is adverse to your business model, Costco. You got a whole lot of black women like my distance they be. It's a membership-based organization. What if all the black women who understand exactly what this black woman went through, what if they said, we're now going to revoke our membership, you go out of business. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and get that statement on the record, support your employee. I wish a Karen would. You want to call the police on them for having a barbecue on a In Sunday. You feel right, back off. I'm going to tell them there's an African American man threatening my life. Captain Saber, Karen, let me say this to you first off. Let's put up the picture full mask. Karen don't want to be saved. I know you tried to do a nice thing. It sounds like you may have broken protocol, allowed her to get on the plane with a bottle of wine. You thought you were bonding with a person. Karen's are incapable of authentic bonding. And I feel your pain, sir, I do. You just met this person, you gave them these courtesies, you gave her a hug because she was having an anxiety attack. You are a very decent individual, you're a good person. And the Karen turned on you. Sir, Karenicity is an untreatable disease. That's what we've been told by therapists. I got more video and it gives you an idea of what happened in the beginning. Here it is. She's not accusing you of anything. Yes, she did. All right, sit down and stay there. Sit down, or we're going to close. We're going to land somewhere else and you're going to have the cops take you to jail. Okay. You're going to defer and you're going to jail. Is that what you want to happen? There is a way. Everybody's watching what you're doing. I don't care. Sit down. She's accusing me. I had a public. You came on the plane with mine. I was nice enough to. Did you see? I was nice enough to let you on the airplane. 
close enough to let you on the aircraft, I could have made you stay in Houston. This is how you're going to treat me? But sir, there was wine in the cup. You're right, sir. She should have stayed in Houston. Let's put up the picture again. All right. The TikToker who uploaded the video said that the Karen who could not get her wine mentions they had to land the plane so she could get escorted off to be arrested, causing even more delays than the passengers already had over some wine. What have we learned here today? We have learned that you cannot extend Karen's courtesies. It's part of their disease. You see, they believe they are owed these courtesies. You did not do anything nice for her. You did what you were supposed to do, let her have her way. We've learned a valuable lesson today about Karenicity. All right, AB, don't give Karen's courtesies. What's what's that old saying? You you spoil a rod, you spoil a child. Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying beat nobody, but what I am saying is, see, that's what happened when you don't hold them accountable, right? And you let them do what you want, what they want to do, and you let them bend the rules and all that kind of stuff, and then they feel no no issue about right. disrupting the lives of others. Yeah. Okay? And this this guy's likely probably going to be disciplined somehow because. Even if it's allowable, which I can't imagine it is, but even if it's allowable to bring a wine pot along a plane on some level, the fact that it blew up like this, they're going to say you should have known better. It's it's gonna cost the the airlines too much money, right? And they already uh, on the brink, okay, yeah. with canceling flights and everything else they got going on. So you shouldn't have took that chance, buddy. I'm trying to figure out how she got the wine past security though, past TSA, because don't they have rules? Okay, and I'm gonna just Karen, Karen okay. Institute. There it is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's why that's why we do this. We're trying to alert people to the reality of Karenicity in the world. I just right? feel like if Karen's got this worked up about the people who have been wrongfully accused and, and sentenced to prison, we might actually get somewhere in this country. But prison it's- reform will be a reality. Okay. There it is. All right. Um, hell of a thing happened, all right, in a hospital elderly man physically assaulted in my opinion by security here it is Early this morning, Moses Cone. Put the picture of the hospital up. Let me give you the background that we know so far. This occurred at Moses H. Cone Memorial Hospital in Greensboro, North Carolina. Per the North Carolina Beats Instagram post, thanks to the Beat Mob for sending this in, an elderly man was assaulted at Cone Health Hospital in Greensboro, in Greensboro, North Carolina, early this morning. From our understanding, the officer seen pushing this man as he was leaving is said to be a security officer working for the hospital. This is disgusting. That elderly man is using a cane to walk there. There's no need for this racist officer to push him in, quote. According to WFMY News 2, the Greensboro Hospital took action after video showed a security guard pushing an older man with a cane down to the ground Tuesday, August 1st. Cone health officials said the guard no longer works there. The reality is he should not have worked there in the first place. I cannot imagine this is his first time being inappropriate with someone. It was caught on camera. You all have cameras in the lobby. Have you checked the footage? 
One, uh, Cohen Health sent a statement to the local news says, and I quote this video, does not reflect Cohen Health's values of caring and compassion. And for that, we are sorry. We are seeking to contact the gentleman involved in the incident in our emergency department this morning to offer a personal apology. The security guard is no longer employed by Cone Health. Um, please, if someone knows this individual, please make sure you get this statement I'm about to make to him. Sir, it is my recommendation that you do not go to that hospital, that you do not engage in a conversation with anybody on the executive level, that you call an attorney. You call an attorney quick, all right? And have your attorney meet the hospital executive team on your behalf. What happened to you should have never happened. You are in a hospital, a place of care. You have a cane, you are walking out. What happened to you is criminal. The man who did this has not been arrested. Why has he not been arrested? That was a criminal assault. Why is the hospital not pressing charges? Because they truly don't give a damn about you. They're not outraged, they're enraged. They wanna protect their assets. And so they will tell you, can we just talk about this? Hell no, you can talk to my attorney about this. That security guard was acting as an agent of that hospital, sir. Please understand, and that legal doctrine, that agent of the hospital is the hospital. Okay, please contact an attorney. AB, do you see it any differently? Only thing I see different is there's also a battery attached. Yeah. So assault and yep. battery, right. which is which is criminal, right? And so there should be criminal charges. It is not enough to say that this person no longer works here. You had a patron at your establishment not only be assaulted, but battered because that man was walking away. He was leaving the facility before that security guard decided to put hands on him. And I am pretty sure. I'm not 100%, but if we check the handbook, I don't think that's how that was supposed to go down. Exactly. Sacramento cops, according to many, are downplaying a threat against black children in particular. I want you to hear it for yourself. Here it is. In California, agendas are active to murder black children in the Sacramento area. Murders are to be in cold blood with no remorse. The Intel Relay has contacted more than 100 schools in the Sacramento area to structure this agenda. Let's put up a picture of where the call went to. Black Lives Matter Sacramento said, the call actually came from Sojourner Truth African Heritage Museum, found inside of the Florence Square Shopping Center, South Sacramento. Let me give you the response from the police. The Sacramento Police Department told KCRA 3 News. It is aware of the voicemail and that detectives are looking into it. Police said Monday, uh, that preliminary or preliminarily, they did not believe the threats to be credible. Anyone with information is asked to call the police department's non emergency line at 916 808 5471. What is it that made you all conclude, at least preliminarily? What made you conclude? This is really not a credible threat. Response from schools, KCRA3 News reached out to several school districts across the Sacramento region to see if they had heard of any of these messages. A Sacramento City Unified School District representative said its Safe Schools Department had not, had not received a complaint about a voicemail, though schools are closed for the summer. The San Juan School District said it also did not directly receive the voicemail. Chief Kathy Lester, Sacramento PD, that's who's in charge, buck stops with her. Ma'am, it would be prudent to simply alert people of authority who actually have to oversee the safety of children. If you took it even halfway seriously, 
You follow the protocol and say, listen, we received this voicemail. Your detectives, your officers are likely to contextualize it as they choose. Maybe say, we don't really think it's anything to it, but just in case. You all didn't even do that, nothing at all. They were totally unaware until the local news told them, there's a threat against your black children in this school. Are you aware of it? No, they were not aware of it. The Kansas City police downplayed the threat of a serial killer as, uh, as well. If you remember that, Kansas City engaged in this um, narrative that said there was no serial killer. And what's ironic about the story in Kansas City, we reported on indisputable that we believe that there was something more to it. Look at the headlines, completely unfounded rumor about serial killer in Kansas City is untrue, police say. Another headline, KCPD, social media rumors regarding a serial killer targeting women, untrue. Another headline, KCPD, social media posting, post claiming serial killer on loosing KC, completely unfounded. Let's go to it. After dismissing valid concerns from black folk who have put the dots together over missing black women in Kansas City. The police discovered the body of Janie Crosdale. Ms. Crosdale further validating the prospect of a serial killer or an accomplice still at large. There was a serial killer in that area, maybe more than one. I share this as a public service announcement to everyone in the region of Sacramento. If your local law enforcement will not do the proper thing, which is to give you information, we will. We will. And do not think just because the police have concluded there is no threat against communities they threaten on a regular basis that it is okay. Obviously they have not done their due diligence. They have not engaged in a simple investigative practice and they have not done the bare minimum, which is send you all an email in Sacramento schools to let you know that black children have been threatened. All right, AB thoughts. Well, this wouldn't be the first time that Sacramento Police Department had some going on like this, right? Yep. They have been um, accused of racial inequalities and injustice and handling these type of issues in a discriminatory manner um, multiple times before. I believe even one of their former officers um, brought forth a lawsuit because of how that officer said that they were being treated um, as a person of color. Um, my biggest issue is that you received a threat, right? A detailed plot, right? That is criminal intent. We have a crime, right? We have a conspiracy. You don't even need two people for a conspiracy anymore, right? We have a conspiracy here to harm children. The children that we claim so much we want to protect. And so it it, it just baffles my mind that there was no forward action on this to just make sure at the very least that these children were protected or there were things put in place, right? That the taxpayer dollars Right, these taxpayers include people of color, mm -hmm. black parents who produce these black children. So they deserve to be protected in the same manner. And the fact that whoever did this potentially used some sort of like voice, it sounded like it was like AI or maybe yep. like some voice changing, like that goes to show intent. That goes to show you know what you are doing. That goes to show that you are trying to cover up a crime and hide. Y'all can find anything else y'all looking for, but y'all can't link. This voicemail, back to the person who 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 left it, I find yep. it impossible. I find, yeah. I find if, if y'all could figure out uh, evidence twenty years after Tupac gone, right? Y'all y'all figure out who did this, and, and they need to be stopped. Think about it in this context. If that threat would have been against, let's say, a member of their elected political class, that elected politician would have received information about a potential threat. Why? Because to them. The elected official is important and black children are not. I don't give a damn how you contextualize it in your mind. My statement stands true. We got more on the other side. It's indisputable, stick and stay.
a white officer sues for discrimination. He's a police, he wants to be a police chief. Another chief gets hired. The police chief that gets hired is white too. Yeah, all right, let's put it up full mass. It's a hell of a story, it's interesting. Some um, twists and turns here. So a white cop is, su- is suing for being passed over um, by another white cop. Michael Sack, a Missouri police lieutenant is suing the city of St. Louis for passing him as chief of police, arguing that he was not considered for the position because he is white. And the mayor, Mayor Jones, only had interest in hiring a black police chief. Now, let me give you some background to this. Um, so Sack is claiming that the city was originally determined to hire one of two other black officers to be chief, according to a complaint filed by Sack's lawyers. One black candidate, um, Mel Ron Kelly, withdrew from consideration while the other, Larry Boone, declined the city's offer because it could not get him the car he wanted in addition to the compensation package offered. His suit, however, is complicated by the fact that St. Louis hired another white officer anyway, current chief Robert Tracy in the middle, all right? The suit says that after the two black candidates were out of the running, the administration decided to hire an outsider in Tracy, who at the time was chief of police in Delaware City of Wilmington, instead of an internal candidate like SAC. The rationale for this, alleged SAC lawyers, was for the city to avoid acknowledging that SAC was always qualified for the job. Well, it sounds like you need to amend the filing counselor because this is no longer a racial discrimination file, um, which is quite interesting. Despite hiring a white chief and still keeping his current job as a lieutenant, uh, the department uh, in the department, Sack and his legal team are still trying to, um, you know, take it to court. Sack's attorney, Lynette. Petruska said the conduct is quote outrageous and she looks forward to litigating the matter in court. She noted Sack could not publicly comment on the lawsuit because he is still employed by the department and that will violate the agency rules. You know, it is interesting that he is saying, well, this is um, reverse discrimination basically is what he's saying, right? Intent matters in discrimination lawsuits. The outcome can be the same, but the reason you came to the outcome, your intent in the process could make the difference. Now, if they still ended up hiring a white male for the job, you would imagine that no one had an intent to say no to all white applicants, given the fact they did not say no to all white applicants. I don't see how this case continues to go forward. I guess they're going to argue process. Uh, They cannot argue the conclusion here. And it's going to be difficult to to determine damages when it looks as if you are not going to get a job anyway. All right, so AB, what are your thoughts legally on this case? Uh, Legally, the attorney who is trying this case, uh, you need to go check in with the ABA because you're not supposed (laughs) to be bringing frivolous lawsuits, okay? You're supposed to bring, you you shall not. Okay, right. shall not defend or bring a case that has no facts or no basis in law. Okay, so if there were other white candidates, then you weren't discriminated against because you were white. Okay, and even if you were to think that you were qualified for the job, that doesn't mean you were the best person for the job. You lost because yeah. it, was, it wasn't the job for you. So That's to it. that lawyer, good luck. That's all I saw all right, it's going to be interesting to see if it actually goes to court and somebody's actually put on deposition. All right, um, a police chief decides to physically assault allegedly a homeless individual, unsheltered man, kick him in the back of the head. He lies about it to the local authorities. He gets arrested. Here's some of the video. Confusing him for battery and note all of his stuff that he said into the report, but whatever happened with that, he's not able to provide any type of even close 
to a description, white beard, black beard, like you right. can't give any description of all these people. So if you stab them multiple times, there's absolutely zero stab wounds on them whatsoever. All we can corroborate is that they beat this poor guy up in an alley for no reason. Right. Who wants to press charges? All right, turn around, put your hands behind your back. We are going to detain you right now. We've got a whole another investigation occurring at this point. Damn shame. Put him up for a mass. What kind of human being assaults helpless people? An Ohio police officer has been apprehended in Key West, Florida, after authorities say he assaulted an unsheltered man, then lied about it. 40 year old Boston Heights police chief. Chad McCardle was charged with misdemeanor level battery Friday morning, should have been a felony. Officers say the chief attacked an unsheltered man from behind for no apparent reason. According to an arrest report obtained by Fox News Digital, a taxi driver called the police at about 1 a.m. to report a shirtless man banging on his door. The man identified as McCardle told the driver that he was stabbed and that people wanted to kill him before laying down and crying on the sidewalk. When officers arrived, he told them he was dragged into a vehicle and stabbed by two suspects. Police were unable to find any stab, um, stab wounds by, uh, by two suspects. No stab wounds, blood on his hands um, or evidence of his claims. The information he provided became increasingly contradictory. The man is a damn chief of police, he has command over men who have a license to kill you. McCardo, the chief, could not describe the stick or which of the two males stabbed him. He stated that he was able to grab the stick from the male and stab the male in the throat with that stick. McCardo said that the man was probably dead now. To be noted, that no evidence was found during the investigation that could prove the statements. Officers also reported finding a beaten, unsheltered man in an alley who reported he had been attacked. The man later told police that he recognized the chief of police as the man who assaulted him. Authorities later found the chief's shoe in the alley showing he was present during the attack. Let's put up the mayor, the mayor of Boston Heights, Bill Gonsi. Bill, well, buck stops with you, doesn't it? The Boston Heights Police Department or any other Boston Heights Village Authority figures have yet to make a comment. They haven't said a damn word about this, nothing at all, nada. So let's be very clear about why this likely happened. Yes, obviously, this is a psychopathic um, tendency. Uh, sounds as if maybe other elements are mixed into this, possibly drugs and alcohol. But if you do a psychological evaluation every six months, every one year on your police officers, you may pick things like this up. But cops don't want to go through that. Maybe a jurisdiction will have them go through a psychological evaluation on day one, maybe right before, right after boot camp. Please understand psychology is a spectrum dynamic. You are not the same person today as you will be next year. Experiences, exposures and environment will change your overview, will change your psychology. Why do we not test officers on a regular basis, at least once a year? It is because they know what we will find. There's a reason why virtually 100% of cops who take the psychological evaluation initially pass. Do you think that's a truly objective test? Of course not, it's not set up that way. Test the officers because the cop you get on day one is not going to be the same cop on day 365. All right, AB, very sad thoughts.
Oh, absolutely. I think you took the words right out of my mouth, right? Like these officers need to be a subject not only to evaluations, but therapy services um, throughout their time in law enforcement. Because let's be honest, the things that they see, the experiences that they have, that does affect your psyche. Um, in addition to that, though, it's like you're, you're lying to other police, right? And and we've had a few cases recently where people was like, well, you're using police resources and you're lying to the police and you should be held accountable. And I think the same should go here. Yep. We trust officers to protect and serve, but they cannot do that if they are not right in the head, okay? And if they can't be trusted. Especially by their fellow officers. So I think evaluations needs to be need to happen. We need to get some sort of legislation on that um, because times have changed, and as we see, people are just spiraling downhill more and more. And I, I think this officer not only needs to be held criminally liable, but civilly liable. And whoever you know in that department, y'all need to be held liable too because this this cannot continue to happen. It's amazing the kind of people we give authority and leadership to. All right, I got a question for you. What in the red state hell? You can take a gun, shoot somebody in the face. It's not hard. Sometimes it might even be fun if they're a godless commie. Now, what they're trying to do is sneak the COVID vaccine in your salads. I never had, I hate math. Somebody say amen. They hear at Augusta High School that led to Chris Wood's death. What the f is that? Holy cow, I'm totally going so fast. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, let's put up the picture for a mass. Listen, he put himself in that situation. <laughs> there's, there's actually a story <laughs> to this. This is a Boston police officer. <laughs> Why did it look like he was a mannequin when he was coming down? Did somebody knock him out and throw him down a damn slide? <laughs> All right, so the Boston police say the officer uh, did get hurt. Uh, let me give a big shout out, by the way, uh, to the I team. Uh, in the local area of WBZ News who did this. Boston police say the officer did get hurt and was treated using his own insurance, not the police department issued insurance. Would have been difficult to explain this one. The department also told the I team he has not missed work with a line of duty injury. Uh, he probably just took a regular ass time off. But there are other questions about the appropriateness of the officer, gun built and all, okay? Uh, he had on his gun, he didn't, didn't even take the gun belt off. Going down a children's slide in the public, we asked the department about that. Uh, they said they had no comment. Let's put the picture up again. Sir. If you go down children's slides in that manner, sir, there's not very much in life I can trust you with. All right, AB, thoughts? Well, I see the no comment because it's the, the recklessness and, and the negligence, right. but, but but what was it? How did he go down the slide? <laughs> we don't understand. It was like he came from another dimension and <laughs> went into the slide the wrong way. <laughs> I know, <laughs> uh, but listen, at least he didn't kill anybody unarmed, all right? Okay, AB, always a pleasure. Tell people I think follow you, check out your great work. Thank you so much for having me once again. Um, you can follow me on social media. It's I am legally hype. I am on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and was it X now? It ain't Twitter no more. It's yeah, X, right? Something like that. Um, I'm on Spill too, so you know, spill on over and holla at me. But thank you all for having me once again. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure. Super proud of you, dear sister. Okay. Thank you. All right, bullpen is next. Stick and stay.
All right, welcome back. Let's get it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the bullpen. All right, he's back. David Grasso, anchor at Bold. Does a lot of neat stuff. Typically, a little more conservative than he should be, but <laughs> we don't hold that against him on the program. David, good to have you back. How are you? Well, you're going to need that viewpoint right now, Doc, with all these shenanigans going on with Trump. So let's get into it. Let's get into it, man. All right, so obviously, Donald Trump indicted again by the DOJ. I actually predicted he would be indicted twice. I always believed after Secret Service was called to testify before the grand jury, it was about January 6th, okay? Um, and Fulton County, Georgia, they are slated to indict Trump at any moment, maybe this week, maybe next week, but it absolutely is happening this month. Um, and he probably still has some entanglements in New York that he has not quite settled. What say you about all of this? Well, you know, this is a very interesting situation. None of us could have ever predicted that this many indictments would have come down. Of course, you said the suit with January 6th. We imagined when they brought Jack Smith back home from the Netherlands that something was going to happen. If you read the indictment, it's very plain spoken. It's very easy to understand. Even for someone who's not a lawyer, I encourage all of your viewers to read the indictment. It is 45 pages. If you read the first 10 to 12 pages, you'll get the general gist. What do I think about this? Well, it depends, right? If you like Trump, you don't believe any of it. If you dislike Trump, it just gives you more ammo. Haven't we all made up our minds by now? I don't think everybody has. But I do think most people have picked a side, right? So you have a lot of tribalism in politics. I do think some people are going to um, at least be influenced to some degree, given the severity of it. Most people, at least internally, know, you know, Trump did some things he should not have done. Uh, That's the bare minimum. But then many who support him will contextualize it and say, but other presidents have done A, B, and C. So why should we not hold Trump accountable? I don't think the two things conflate, but People will do that. At the end of the day, the issue for me, the biggest issue for me was his behavior after contacted by the federal government about classified documents and the level of classification that these documents were according to the allegation. These were SAPs, special access programs. These things are so classified, they do not fit within the normal structure of linear classification. Uh, And typically presidents are not even aware of SAP programs anyway. How did he become aware of the program? How did he get his hands on the program? And how was he able to basically obstruct justice for over a year with those documents? I think that's important, even in the even in the military context, things like this should be important. Do you not believe that some of this may persuade somebody who once was a Trump supporter to say, you know what? Damn, he did that, that's too far. You know, I think it depends because ultimately when someone is a dyed in the wool Republican, they're going to eventually support the nominee. And right now the opinion polls as they stand all suggest that Donald Trump will be the nominee. In fact, the governor of Florida, my home state is not anywhere close to Donald Trump. You know, I'm in Red America right now, I'm in Biloxi, Mississippi. So I always take the chance when I'm outside of, you know, the bi-coastal places to talk to, you know, regular folk. And I ask them, you know, with Fox News blaring in the background, what do you think about Donald Trump? What do you think about Ron DeSantis? And I was sort of surprised at the responses I got. I've gotten a lot of, well, both of them don't know when to shut their mouths. Mm. Both of them have done things wrong. And maybe we should be considering other nominees like Nikki Haley or Chris Christie or Tim Scott or literally anyone else. And that was a surprising answer that I've gotten from several people in Florida, in Alabama and Mississippi. So this is no longer a minority opinion, but unfortunately that is not yet being seen in the polls yet. That is so interesting because your direct conversation um, is indicative of people actually starting to see it for what it is. Now, he's still very popular, sir, with Republican polling. At the end of the day, he's not going to get the, let me put it this way. I don't think he secures the nomination by way of actual victory. And let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, Just like in the Democratic primary, uh, the Republican primary, you have a goal. You have a particular set requirement 
of delegates, you gotta win. If you don't get it, but you're the lead, you're the leader going into the convention, it'll broker in your direction. But you can do a broker convention away from the person who did not get all of the prerequisite delegates required to totally secure the nomination before the national committee. That is likely to be the scenario with Donald Trump, I believe. I do not think he goes over the threshold. Uh, and then you will go into a brokered convention. Now, typically a broker convention is just a formality because the person with the most delegates, they're going to give it to the guy. I think in this case with Trump, it may be different. So if that scenario presents itself and Donald Trump goes into the Republican National Committee, if he makes it that far, he does not have enough to secure based on threshold requirement, but he has the lead and they have to broker the rest of them. Do you think they broker it away from him or toward him? My understanding of the Republican Party is that it's a lot more democratic, funny enough, no pun intended, than the way the nominee is done in the Democratic Party. Okay. As we learned in 2008, you know, I was sitting in a class, I went to the Harvard Kennedy School, and one of the foreigner, foreign students asked what a superdelegate was. And our professor came out and said, I'm a superdelegate. What question do you have? And just everyone froze. According to my understanding of Republican primary politics, there are no superdelegates. A delegate they don't have super, delegate that's correct. Delegate. There's no superdelegates, yeah. right. Not so anymore. that's something that's kind of endemic to the Democratic Party. I think what you're saying may be correct. I think what's more likely is we need to look at the history of Eugene Debs. Eugene Debs okay. was the socialist candidate in 1920 that ran from prison. And that's yep. right now something that may be in the cards, which, yeah. you know, as always, Trump said, are you not entertained? I think we're looking <laughs> at a whole lot of entertainment. We've never seen someone running on a major party ticket from jail. And of yeah. course, Trump, like any other American, deserves his day in court, no matter who he is. And we have yet to see what happens. Yeah, and I think the candidate you're referring to, uh, got like just shy of a million votes. It actually got a lot of votes um, and was in prison, which sets the precedent that it can happen, unfortunately. All right, would you vote for Trump if he's an nominee? I think it depends. I'm not really a Trump person. I never came out as a never Trumper. Okay. Back in the day, I was more of a Jeb Bush person, you know, moderate Republican, something that used to be called Rockefeller Republican. As we've mm -hmm. seen as the party has moved further and further to the right, you don't hear a lot of those terms anymore. Yeah. So I was never really a Trump supporter. But you know, I, I mean, I think it really depends on who is on the Democratic ticket. And I think that's an indispensable part of this conversation. At All the right. same time, you're reading the headlines about what's happening to Trump. You're reading about Gavin Newsom preparing himself for a run. Yeah. Because as we all know, our president is way up there in age. And the base, of course, is very young on the left. And we'd all like to see, regardless of your partisan politics, younger, more mainstream candidates who are not I mean, Biden isn't even a boomer. He's a silent generation. He's older than my grandparents. So let's yeah, but I mean, Biden got elected because Trump was just that horrible. You got to understand that the context of why Democrats were excited to vote. Uh, there was no Democrat exciting Democrats. The only person that excited Democrats in a legitimate way was uh, the idea of getting rid of Donald Trump because of how disastrous he was. Uh, and he brings that back to the table this time. I just think you all have a big problem in redefining the party. I no longer believe you all have a party. I don't believe the Republican Party exists anymore. I think you're trying to still promote it as if it does. You all do not have a values core. Your platform has become non-existent. No one is willing to say what they stand for because they are afraid Trump would say something different in the future. So everybody runs on this uh, you know, these basic principles against other people. So they run against Black Lives Matter. They run against the LGBTQ community. They run against those who are socially left rather than running on actual articulated policies. Do you see it differently, sir? No, I don't. I actually agree with you. And I think the Republicans do need a radical rebrand. And that's why I'm really hoping that among this slate of candidates, like the ones I mentioned, like Nikki Haley, like Tim Scott, like literally anyone else except Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump would be much better for the party. I concur with you, sir. And it would actually be much better for us as well, because Democrats get to get away with everything because the other option is so damn unbelievably not an option. And you couldn't have said it better than I could. And that yeah. is indisputable. So there, there you, go. you go. Thank you, dear brother. Appreciate you as always. Always. All right. Remember, take care of yourself.
take care of each other, take care of the planet. Remember the truth is always indisputable.